forgive. Jesus said, if you forgive men their trespasses, that clears the relationship with your Father in heaven. But if you do not forgive their trespasses, men their trespasses, what does that look like? How do I know? If I have not forgiven, and, and after all, I believe this is a primary point Jesus is making. Unforgiveness is what Jesus is warning against here. Fundamentally, this is the mark that he's aiming at. How do you know? How do you know if you have not forgiven? Let me just give you uh, four or five things to think about. Number one, you analyze and calculate the wrong that's been done, the debt that's owed you. And you will not let it go until the offender has paid in full, whatever that be. And let me just throw this thought in your mind. It will never be. An unforgiving spirit is never satisfied. It's like fire. Never satisfied. You've got to take away the fuel to quench that fire. Forgiveness. Secondly, how do I know if I have not forgiven? You're a prisoner to the past, to the pain. Sinful attitudes against your offender is nurtured. And it, the weird thing is we can justify it. Aren't you thankful that God doesn't do the same for you? Thirdly, how do I know if I'm not forgiven? You seek pity. And you can do this in so many different ways. You seek pity. You, you hope for someone to ask. Just ask. You're waiting. You're cocked and loaded. Just ask. Why I am looking the way I am and feeling the way I do. Just ask. I'm, I'm ready to unload upon you about the debts that are owed me. You've got an unforgiving spirit in you. It's called bitterness. Fourth. You are unable to acknowledge any good about your debtor. You see nothing good. There's nothing. Sometimes in counseling, I'll have to ask that. Do you see anything good about your husband or your wife? Well, nothing. There's absolutely nothing. Nothing. Church members. Workplace. Somebody's messed with you. Somebody's looked at you wrong or, or maybe done something more severe. That's really bad. You harbor that. You, you hold on to that. And your, your view, your evaluation of other people is controlled by an unforgiving spirit. It's control. I'm saying this to you to help you. If you, if this, if the spirit of God makes this real to you, I'm telling you, it will be liberating to your soul. It'll change your life. Another evidence, you're unable to wish blessing upon your debtor. Maybe even wishing them harm. You can't pray for them. If you do pray for them, it's the imprecatory prayer, right? And we justify that. Now, brothers and sisters, while you can only say to someone, I forgive you, I don't think it's right for us just to throw this I forgive you around loosely. While you can only say I forgive you really to one who says I repent, according to, if I understand Luke 17 correctly, you must forgive in spirit if you are to be free from bitterness and have peace-filled, joyful communion with your Father in heaven. So what goes through your mind as you hear the words of Jesus? When he says, pray like this. And forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors. 
For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Don't hear this so much as a threat as it is an encouragement. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. And you don't want that kind of relationship with your Father. Your Father in heaven. 